started, welcome. My name is Adva Salinger, and I'm really excited for this conversation we're going to have today, which is both important and timely. Um, you know, migration and mobility have sort of long been part of the human experience, but we're seeing a lot more of it these days in the world and, and here in Latin America. And, and I'm hoping we can have a really robust conversation about how you know, rural to urban migration, how migration both as a result of humanitarian crisis and, and as people seek opportunities is um, impacting countries and what policies are needed to sort of best respond to those issues. And you know, here in, in Latin America, we're, we're seeing what is the, what the UN has called the largest displacement of people in the region's history coming out of Venezuela. Um, about 600,000 are now in Colombia, and tens of thousands, I believe, maybe up to 100,000 um, are here in Brazil, and, and the outflow of people continues as the situation in that country continues to deteriorate. Last month, we also saw the zero draft release of the Global Compact on Migration, which is aimed at creating uh, global standards um, around issues from, global, from border security to the treatment of migrants. And so we're really seeing a time when there's a global dialogue about what are the best policies and practices for addressing some of these issues. So I have the pleasure to be joined today by a really wonderful um, panel. So, so to my left here is uh, Minister Marco Jorge de Lima, who is the Minister of Industry, Foreign Trade, and Services here in Brazil. Um, and Marcela Escobari, who's a senior advisor to MasterCard, but has also had um, a long career both in academia and has worked for the US Agency for International Development. And Sergio Andrade is the founder and executive director of Agenda Pública here, here in Brazil, which is doing really interesting work to promote cooperation between governments, business, and civil society to solve public problems. So thank you all for, for being with me here today. Um, and Minister, I think I think I will start with with you. Um, you know, Brazil is firsthand grappling with the with a lot of these issues right now, especially as uh, you know migrants and refugees come across the border from Venezuela. Um, I know you have a, a personal history in Venezuela and understand some of these issues. Um, how how are you looking to implement government policies to? Uh, address these migration issues uh, as they come. I know it's, you know, the government has talked about it putting a strain on, on some municipalities in the north. How do you support those local municipalities? What sort of solutions are you looking at? Meu muito bom dia a todos. Um prazer poder participar desse painel. Bom, de fato, conheço, conheço razoavelmente a situação que o Brasil e a Venezuela. The challenges Brazil and Venezuela have been facing. Although I'm originally from Rio de Janeiro, I've been living in the state of Roraima for many years now, which uh, borders Venezuela and which is uh, under a strong impact caused by immigration. Venezuelan migrants who are being forced to flee their country mainly because of the hunger crisis, very serious crisis. And what we have seen in Boa Vista and Bacaraima, the municipality that borders with Venezuela and uh, which is under the greatest impact, is that you see thousands of people living on the street, on the streets with their families, their children, whole families with young, small children. Every single day, five new children are born in Boa Vista from Venezuelan families into Venezuelan families. And Brazil and President Temer, Brazilian authorities have been deeply moved by this. President Temer has visited the region several times and now uh, funds have been allocated to by the Ministry of Defense, which is taking action in Roraima in this regard. On the other hand, uh, the Ministry uh, of Industry, we are also looking into this situation with the Foundation Emma in a public-private partnership. We have provided 100 computer terminals, providing access to education of mathematics to children who are enrolled in the 
uh, municipalities, schools with, mul with multilingual programs with uh, lessons in Spanish. And I'd like to thank the presidents of Ericsson and Vivo for being here attending the session and for their support in Pacaraima, because through the new technologies, we will be able to uh, take different actions on the educational level, public policies level, because this uh, group of people have no access to the internet whatsoever. And the president, of course, is also uh, approving immediate measures to also provide food to this group and to integrate this group into the labor market and the, our partnership with Vivo and Ericsson, we want to set up a laboratory in Boa Vista, the capital of Rhode Island, to train this group of people for job positions. So the federal government is looking into the, this issue and my children were born in Rhode Island. That is where I live now. And I am also very fond of Venezuela, where I lived back in the 90s and where I had the opportunity to live for four years. Um, Marcelo, you have uh, a wealth of experience across different sectors. You've um, worked in government, you've been an academic, and, and now you're an advisor to the private sector. Um, you've seen these issues of migration from a lot of different perspectives. And, and I'm curious if you can share um, you know, what sort of solutions you think you've seen work in the different contexts and how each of the sort of different parties and players involved need, need to be engaged mm -hmm. at a time like this. Great, no, thank you so much. I, it, it's interesting in, in in immigration. I think it's probably of the topics that uh, that affect countries. It's um, it's the one where data and politics tend to be the furthest apart, and and I think it's important to just divide immigration versus refugees. And when I was at at Harvard, study after study that we did would correlate immigration with dynamism in countries with growth. Um, and uh, it was a wonderful mechanism for the transfer of know-how among countries, which is if there is any secret uh, sauce to growth, it is this, the transfer of know-how, right? There are studies that show it increases entrepreneurship, it increases know-how, it complements local labor, uh, labor it, uh, it actually improves exports to the sending country. Um, Yet Latin America has actually one of the lowest uh, foreign-born citizens uh, as part of their population. So I think it's probably that $100 bill in the floor waiting for someone to, to pick it up. I think the difference with refugees is that it just, the inflow has um, happened because of shocks, right? Natural disasters, uh, shocks in violence, shocks in, uh, in um, financial shocks. And when I was at USAID, we had to deal with the crisis of the UACs, the unaccompanied children that were fleeing El Salvador, uh, which had warlike con conditions, right? Murder rate was 120 over um, every 100,000. US has five, right? Um, and there was 250,000 people crossing the borders, mostly minors. Now we have the issue of Venezuela with, you know, over a million people who have left only in the last couple of years. And, um, and I think the, the solutions are what the minister talked about. I mean, it's a humanitarian response. It's a integration response. But I think we have lots of lessons uh, from, uh, from these situations around the world that an approach, there's nothing like an approach to root causes, right? These problems do not fit nicely in, within borders. So, um, you know, dealing with the root causes of, of, of violence in El Salvador, you know, dealing with diphtheria and malaria before they become regional epidemics is, is, is part of the answer because when shocks happen at this level, there's no walls that can be tall enough. Sergio, you're, you're um, doing some really interesting work here in Sao Paulo with, with the government, helping them to develop a new refugee policy and helping them to figure out how to integrate refugees. Um, 
what sort of components or new systems do you think are needed to, to integrate migrants here in this city? And, and I imagine you might look to replicate this model um, throughout the country. I know you're working in large parts of the country. Thank you, Marcelo. Oh, thank you, Adva. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 bem, o ministro na rua... Well, the minister pointed out some challenges at a national level and in Brazil have been seeking to address these issues. The government of Sao Paulo, well, in the face of these challenges with migrants coming into Brazil and into Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo, broadly, it has been reviewing its policies to integrate these migrants, especially refugees, into the state of Sao Paulo and the daily life of Sao Paulo. And from our part, we're supporting governments in addressing these uh, problems, these issues, in tackling these challenges together with the civil society and the private sector. So the specific characteristic regarding refugees illustrates something that is very particular in public administration, that is how we tackle complex problems, considering the fragmentation and uh, lack of integration in the public policies. In the case of the refugees, for example, you have different public services and agencies that uh, actually address the refugees' issues. You have education, training, housing, transportation, employment, integration, and more complex aspects such as reintegration, bringing families together, reunifying families, so we have to uh, coordinate actions among different government agencies at different government levels, ranging from uh, law enforcement. It is not just a matter of assigning uh, one specific player to address this complex issue. It has to be a concerted action, and the solution that um, we have come up with is to set up a lab uh, looking, working with the Sustainable Development Goals and to hold a debate, a dialogue with all government agencies so that the actions aiming at refugees at a national and state level can be concerted. We cannot have actions at the government level alone. We need to integrate them to the private sector actions as well. And uh, through this lab, we are building concerted actions in the short, mid, and long run that have addressed the refugee issues at many different levels through different perspectives and by identifying our failures and flaws we can further integrate our joint action it's extremely important to work together for all these stakeholders to come together and to uh, present one answer as to how we're going to uh, receive the refugees. Many of these refugees hold university degrees, are highly skilled, and can contribute greatly to our country. And their degrees, however, are not recognized by uh, our system. It's a very bureaucratic process, and this is also a severe problem that has to be tackled through this collaborative action. Our policies 
do not include refugees and they're making and when it comes to the state of Sao Paulo we are bringing the refugees into policy making processes so throughout the process we had the participation of refugees from Colombia from the Congo who also contributed through their inputs to this process and with examples as to how the Brazilian society can present answers for their further integration. So this, these were all the factors that were considered. It, it's worth of highlight that there is an integrated effort with the federal government and state governments, especially those uh, states more effect affected, to uh, mitigate the impact, both due to the fact that we are um, historically a welcoming country formed essentially by migrants and in the case of this migration that we are observing due to the economic uh, problem Venezuela is leaving federal government is acting in different fronts first I, I said a little bit of what was released to the Ministry of Defense but this is an integrated action involving other ministries for instance the case of the Ministry of Labor acting acting in uh, that state to check employability of uh, these people, what uh, we can do. In terms of health, we, we have a reinforcement there of the health uh, programs. Uh, for instance, we have a, a, a problem with uh, measles there. I was there in the vaccination campaign last week. I actually uh, I, I took the, the vaccine, I took the shots together with the migrants there in the uh, producers' um, f uh, trade show because I didn't remember that I ha if I had the, the, the vaccine. Just to mention some, exam some examples. Uh, there is a discussion, uh, already uh, ongoing discussion. Um, we have to simplify the process, which is a, a bureaucratic process that involves the academia, involve universities. Of course, we have to be careful in validating the degrees so the professionals in different areas, especially those in the health uh, area, pass through an evaluation to check if uh, they can act in the Mar Brazilian uh, market. But I, I share this opinion that we have to find a way so this validation of degrees, this recognition of diplomas can help in an expedited fashion and in a, in a discussion that should involve also the academia. Obviously, the regional in the regional councils of professional representation. Well, you talked about the importance of addressing root causes um, and in the case of Venezuela in particular, in many of these cases, um, the root causes are largely political and that makes them difficult to address. In situations like this, how, how do you sort of um, look to bridge the, the politics, so to speak, and, and the policies and, and what sort of recommendations might you have for, for governments in the region about what, what their role is in taking collective action to look at some of those root causes? All right, that's a big question. So uh, uh, there's one, one side around politics, which I do, I, I, I personally don't think that we, that the fact that it's a politics question means that, you know, we can't influence it as, as a region. And I think this is a, a failure of political action from, you know, Venezuela and from the rest of us. Uh, but we are here. And I think uh, 
Um, there's a couple issues. I think one is how do we respond now? And I think uh, here there's a lot that we can learn uh, from, from Europe, from the Syrian crisis. And in a place in Europe, which actually had a very cohesive you know, migration policy, which there was free movement, and the Syrian crisis has created a complete collapse of some of these uh, processes. And it's, uh, as you saw in the elections uh, in Italy this year, it, uh, um, it has affected you know, politics at every level. So I think we get to see what has happened and how if we don't deal with this issue at a regional level, it can affect each of the countries, you know, within within their borders and on a, on a political side, uh, so I think the 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 response needs to be a a, a regional one. And I think what ha when it doesn't happen and it disproportionately falls in a few governments and everybody else, then they'll they'll start closing their borders. And I think it's it's like a balloon, right? It'll go it'll go elsewhere. So I think we have the opportunity to take this on as a region. I think that would be um, that would be very valuable. And. Other ways that I think are are are, are, are valuable interventions, and this is going to sound a little bit uh, wonky, but is the example I gave you, which I think is the, the value of data and research to understand the influence of these root causes approach uh, to migration. When I was uh, at USAID, one of the things that we did, right, um, was try to to get some of the data on the, the the origin of some of these migrants in the U.S. to a think tank in D.C. because. It was a big political ask when uh, when uh, uh, Vice President Biden asked Congress for a $750 million uh, package for Central America to deal with 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 the root causes of migration, governance, violence, economic opportunity, right? We're used to dealing it at the border at a much, much, like a, when it costs billions of dollars for thousands of people, right? But this was a big ask, and he had to, whatever, the government had to prove that it was having an effect when you know that immigration and the effects of people coming in are not going to have short-term um, effects. But we were able to prove that in certain places of El Salvador and Honduras, when you brought down a homicide rate in a six-year period at one homicide per year, that actually had a reduction of 3.7 less unaccompanied children that crossed the border. And that piece of data was actually very effective in helping Congress realize, you know what, this, this is a long road, but it's going to have a positive effect, uh, um, you know, eventually on, uh, on, on not just the migration, but the real, the real issues that we care about, which is development and poverty in the region. Great. Um, I think it's probably time. We have a few minutes for questions, so if there's some questions. Um, I'm going to take a couple questions. Please um, introduce yourself and keep your question short. And start here. Hello, my name is Gabriel Alfonso. I'm a global shaper from the Caracas Hub in Venezuela. Um, thank you for your concern. It's it's actually some refreshes to see that you are actually tackling this issue. But my question goes directly. Refugees are our most important actor in this two sides, but what about the, the, the narrative to the Latins, how to receive, how can we prepare our neighbors, because we've built about immigrants, immigrants in a region is normal, but not refugees, it's like the first time that Venezuela is bringing these refugees, and at the end, I can understand is somebody invading your house. So how can we bring a humanitarian, how we contact um, our Brazilians, Colombians, per Peruans, Peruanos, Ecuatoriano, in a way that they receive openly are Venezuelans and do not see them as something that, someone that is coming to invade, to take me. How, mm -hmm. which ideas do you have towards that? Thank you. Great, and we'll take one more question at the back as well. Yes, my name is Tomas Sanabria. I'm a practicing cardiologist from Venezuela. I'm here because uh, I've been a social entrepreneur. And uh, we have a, a telemedicine program in southern Venezuela. And uh, basically in the most uh, jungle, type of uh, regions, uh, particularly the uh, Brazilian border in uh, Roraima area in state for Brazil, and uh, uh, part of the Venezuelan plains uh, related to Colombian borders. And we are having, uh, when I listen, uh, re related to uh, Gabriela's uh, 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 question, we should uh, try to bring some solutions to the people going to these remote areas. 
for example, in uh, southeastern Venezuela, in the frontier with Guyana and Brazil, people is going to the hospitals in Boavista, and uh, they are uh, bringing, they are accepting, and they have been very open to receive many of the Venezuelans, but the number is now climbing and climbing, mm -hmm. and problems are happening. Yeah. What's we your question? Uh, sorry? Your question? Yes. No, uh, it was a, it's a comment. It's a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, more, well, then if than. you can wrap up, we'll see if there's any more questions okay. or we'll okay. let the panel. So, no, uh, the solution uh, that we can add, and uh, I was talking with Dr. Kikawa from here, from Sao Paulo, is to try to bring some uh, telemedicine programs to the people who are uh, uh, non-insured, they don't have insurance in any of the countries where they are going, and to benefit of technology for that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Let me answer sure. one uh, little, uh, just make one comment on Gabriela's point because I, I actually think this is super important and it's very, very tempting um, and it's very easy to use this immigration, more so when it overwhelms certain areas, um, as uh, to be taken for the populist agenda, right? The images, and here's where I think the media has a huge um, role and responsibility to give the other the, the the others to show the other side of the coin the humanity behind people. I mean, even the way the uh, the minister was talking about Venezuela, about how Venezuela you know welcomed him, about the positive stories what people are bringing in. I remember at uh, at at aid we were trying to. It, to work with many of the issues in Colombia, right? Where as, as the peace process was going to start uh, to take effect, you were gonna have a lot of people who were former guerrillas entering the cities. And there was a huge rejection. And one of the things that a, 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 a company, a media company did, they were gonna start a telenovela um, that was going to try to show the, the, the human side of these, of these people. And I thought that was a super effective strategy, right? At the end of the day, uh, we are hospitable people. We are made of immigrants, right? And um, and showing that that humanity and showing the um, the heroes that welcome people, the companies that open the doors, and celebrating those could make a huge effect not only in our policies and making us feel better about ourselves, but um, but also for this topic not to be hijacked by uh, by populists. Sir. Oh. Well, this is a, a question and a comment very interesting. In Brazil, one of the main issues raised during the process of uh, building the new policy is exactly how to uh, prevent this uh, vision of competition to uh, to national population, how to decrease the prejudice associated to those newcomers, especially refugees, but not only refugees, immigrants or migrants, and generally speaking. And one of the most important wishes was uh, talking, uh, uh, having a, a, a broader collaboration of the federal government, so the the Brazilian citizen that. Differently from what we imagine, the imagine of hospitable is not as true as we may think. We have some uh, uh, problems of intolerance that are concrete as any anywhere else in the world, and uh, the narratives are dramatic, and the need of campaigns to clarify the population who are these people that are coming and why are they coming that have no choice in the case of refugees what are one of the most uh, important issues raised an articulation of politics or connection of policies and the connection with the federal government is very important uh, preparing national entities or national citizens to explain to the, those refugees coming how the country works, how the policy works, national issues like employment or validation of a degree, issues that are key for those who need a new home and do not know how the rules of this new home work. To be a good home for those who are uh, coming, we need to implement the measures that are provided in the new uh, 
law that passed last year for migration contemplating the aspect of refuge and but we are still in diapers in this process of uh, refuge and the situation probably will worsen and Brazil has to prepare we know that the and the cooperation with the federal government will be key in this sense well uh, very interesting the question and as uh, the, my colleague just said, the passing of the law 1345, m already mentioned, um, deserves more engagement. We have to pursue a better delivery of uh, pub pul uh, public services or utilities. And Horaima is the most impacted state, but there are other states in Brazil, uh, migrants coming from Argentina, Chile, Peru, countries that uh, received uh, migrants or sent migrants to Venezuela in the past. And uh, the rejection oftentimes happen due to increasing violence, uh, social problems. But I would like to highlight that specifically in the case of the state of Roraima, whenever I talk to Venezuelans in the streets trying to feel what is going on during the whole process and up to having a more um, uh, acute action of the government, who is helping the, the refugees are the, is the local population. Uh, receiving then in, during the rainy season with tents and is the population. So yes, there is a still rejection, but even with this strong impact for the state that is receiving a major amount of population of a state that has not much more than 400,000 uh, inhabitants, I, I'm proud to say as a Brazilian, the citizens engaged on receiving the Venezuelans that are coming. Well, I'm sure we could spend much more time on these series of, of issues, um, and I hope we'll have some continued conversation, but I wanted to thank you all for participating in, in this discussion.